Hey guys, welcome back. And in the last video, I mentioned that we're going to be doing JWT tokens, and I sort of lied, not intentionally, obviously, but I realized after I made the video that I actually need to do some DB cleanup, and then we need to make sure that we have DB available all across the app, so that way we can do things like, for example, make sure the email exists in the, in the, in the system, assuming you're using email for uh, validation or authentication. And that sort of stuff. So, and as I went down that route, then I also realized that we probably should add a little bit more cleanup to our DB, so our DB file is a little more usable. Um, and I want to go over that first before we start adding things to the routes. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is this kind of this, I'm not sure what you call it, but because um, XORM is, is actually a, a, an ORM in itself, but I kind of like to add more to it. Um, so one of the things that I found is when I was building an application, I tended to use the same functions over and over again. So I decided to uh, create functions that I can pass in dynamic objects um, into these functions and get data back. So for example, I can do this. I can say, uh, you know, var, uh, you, let's say user, user, right? Uh, and then let's say you also have var, I don't know, um, uh, car car okay and these are unique objects and then you want to you know find a car with an i you know a, a user with an id well, actually we'll, we'll do this here uh, a user with an id of one in the db right okay car with uh, let's say an id of also one and normally you'd have to write uh, a separate function for each of these right because um of return objects and and uh so but I found that to be incredibly annoying. So, for example, um, you have in, in your user's uh, model, you might have to say something like this. You'd have to say, um, you know, it's package, package users, or oops, whoa, users, and you have to create a you know, function store where you take a user, you know, user, and then you maybe, you know, uh, return uh, uh, users, which is, you know, as we defined earlier, is a, is a a slice of users, right? And then you you know do db dot find you know db dot find and then user and then you return right um, users like so something like that uh, you know oh, oops uh, actually users something like that uh, you know where and then okay well yeah that works for users but then I have to do the same thing for cars when it's really no different you know. Um, it can get very tedious, right? Uh, so I'll show you car. Now you, you you get the idea, right? It's essentially the same function, but you have to write it for each model, which is really annoying. So I went through and um, I created some functions here that I can pass in dynamic objects because they're interfaces, right? And get data back. So I can essentially just say, well, give me you know um, cars with id4 or something like that you know these these kind of these functions and, and as i go i'm adding more and more functions like you know sometimes i want to check to see if something exists in the db right here like for example i, I might want to see if uh um let's say I'm, I'm working on an application that happens to be uh i don't know an insurance um an insurance application and maybe uh, there's a page that has a list of, of users and then on that list of users they you know you want to see if if they have you know, car insurance and house insurance you know like little icons that say you know uh, user nick you know here and, and then it might have a little icon that says you know has car insurance has you just want to check all you want to know is if there's something in the db you don't care about what it actually is then this might be a nice little function that just says hey you know returning a boolean value does it actually exist and, and that's where just stuff like that uh, common use cases where um, you don't want to write an exist function for each model. And so, anyway, take a look at these, see if they're useful. I'm going to be using these in the video series, so I, I suggest, you know, taking a look at them and, and, you know, seeing if they're useful for you. And I think you might actually like them. I, I think they work pretty well. Okay, enough babbling about that. Uh, let's go into the actual router itself. Let's uh, pass in DB stuff uh, to all the routes. So, of course, everything starts with our main function here. Let's close this stuff out. Uh, main function here. We have a DB and it's not being passed. Oh, oh, it is being passed. I forgot we did that. Being passed into the server itself, which is here. And I believe that's the last time we see it. Yep, yep. We sign it to, to the server here. We don't ever actually do anything with it. Well, um, now we're going to actually do something with it. So uh, the very first thing we need to do 
is we need to pass it into the router because the router is where all your uh, handlers and everything are, right? Okay, so server.db, like so. Okay, now of course the router is going to blow up because that function doesn't exist uh, with, with that variable being passed in. All right. So let's go into here. Let's see. Uh, GitHub.com. Go. XORM. Um, XORM. And this is where vendor from DEP comes into hand, handy, but I'm just going to type everything out. Um, DB. It's a pointer. It's an engine. Like so. Okay. Well, now our router ha is aware of it. But what about, uh, you say, our uh, sub router? Well, not really. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, pass it into, well, actually, we'll, we'll do get routes first. So DB, and that is here, get routes. So we'll grab this guy like so, paste that in, get routes, DB, pointer, xarm.engine. Oops, there we go. Now, anytime we essentially a route, um, we'll have access to it. Let's just uh, home handler.init. DB. Um, so now, home handler, this guy here. I need a function. Uh, oops. Init. Um, DB. XORM.engine. Of course, we need to import that. Um, GitHub.com. Go XORM. XORM, like so. Let me say var uh, db. Let's do this here, like so. Oops. We're actually going to uh, do that the other way around because I actually don't like it. db. There we go. db equals db. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to mention, uh, in case you're not too familiar with how Go packages work, this guy was instantiated right here. So when I initialize the db here, it's being passed in like so, and it's now available because th th this is being called afterwards. So now inside this package, there is a DB available. So inside here, because you know there's no way to really pass in a DB into here, right? So the, the DB is now available. So if you want to do something like, you know, db.find or whatever, that has, that's available to you inside this route. So that's kind of how, that's one of the ways, there's many ways to do it, but it's one of the ways to pass uh, database um, <clears throat> functionality into your handlers um, and of course if you needed to models and so on from there okay so now home handler has it um, and I believe we don't need anything else at the moment oh our uh, our sub routes we're not gonna need them at the moment but let's go ahead and attach those so get routes like so and the same thing as I'm, I'm sure you're probably already get already figuring out here Engine, um, github.com forward slash go xorm, xorm. And then, of course, we have the status handler here. This guy in it. Oh, there we go. DB. And then I'm going to just take this stuff right here. Go into the status guy here. And create status.go package. Paste that in. And there we go. And now everything should have access to the DB. We'll test it. Oh, what did I mess up here? Um, can't refer to... Oh, that's right. Did I... Did I really... What did I do here? Um, get routes home. Oh, there we go. Boom. Okay, so now all the routes have access to the DB. So, for example, <laughs> when we go up to this uh, middleware up here, um, and we, uh, oh, well, actually, we're going to need to do, we're going to need to do one more thing here. RDB some dot engine like so DB 
is equal to db. Well, actually, other way, I don't like doing it that way. db, db, do, 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 db, and then, there you go. Now in our middleware up here, we will have access to that database object. So we can do uh, querying. Well, actually, we're gonna pass it into a model and the models of the querying, but y you get the idea. Okay, and then before we go on, let's make sure we actually have users. Um, I believe we have first, last email, password. That should be good. We are ready for JWT. Um, and then one, let's see here. Uh, what, what database was I using? That was test. Okay, I don't know if I have a... Uh, use test. Okay, select star from the users. No, nothing in there. Let's insert something real quick. So, um, insert into users. Um, oh, actually, we're going to need to create a test folder here. Make sure tests. We need, need to um, create an uh, encrypted password. Oh, this is going more in depth than I wanted to. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll, this, we'll do it in this video. Uh, no, we'll do, we'll do it in the next video. We'll, we'll do... Well, let me think about this. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, it, we'll do it now. Um, and I'll just make this video a little bit longer. Um, test. Okay, just for now. And we'll say uh, touch. Actually, we'll do one more. Passwords. Um, you'll see passwords. Touch. Passwords.go. Okay. Um, test, passwords, passwords.go. We'll clear this stuff out like so. Okay, I need to do um, github.com be crypt like so. What did I? Oh. Be crypt. Okay, go doc. And this is where you can find encryption um, for your application. Um, go get, and we'll add that to our make file. Um, install. Action. Go get. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to actually real quick. I'm going to go into here just to save a little bit of time because I know this video is running really long. We're going to go into here. We're going to say, uh, actually, open folder, source projects, v4, um, tests, authentication, like so. Okay. And then I'll show you real quick how to. Oh, source. Oh, I need that file. Um, source, system, password, go. Okay, real quick. Uh, 10 salt, uh, bcrypt, as so. We'll go into. We'll just create the. Well, didn't mean to do that. We'll create the file now. Folder, passwords, new file. Passwords.go, paste that in. Oh, we'll just do that. I will see uh, we're using bcrypt, where we um, <clears throat> take in a hash and a password. We uh, compare it to see if it's valid or not, and we turn true or false. Uh, and then also we have an encryption um, function here, where we can generate passwords. All right, and then I have a quick little. Um, guy here that will uh, make sure that I can generate passwords nice and easy. Um, okay, so we can close this out. Uh, this is actually, we're gonna, we're not gonna do, rel we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, the right way here. Um, not relative paths. api.example.com so, uh, source System passwords, and then we're going to do there. We go, and this should give me the hash that I can put in the DB. So let's say go run 
test or am I already in there? Oh. Go run passwords. Not run oh. Main Oh, that's right. Uh, go test. Learning go tests password. <clears throat> Oh, test. Oh, password name. Test. There we go. Go test. Boom. Okay, that is an encrypted password right there. So we will take that. Okay. Um, and then we will insert users. Uh, first, last, email, password, values. Nick Doe <laughs> um, email um, we'll say Nick at mail.com and then we'll paste that in okay select star from users now when they pass in their password um, we can compare that with this password here okay we are all ready to go over JWT in the next video so recap um, we when we'll do it in reverse order, we uh, generated passwords. We have a, um, a password uh, um, file we can, um, package we can use here to uh, validate uh, passwords and also encrypt passwords. We also passed DBs into routes so that all of our routes now have access to the database. And we prepared ourselves for um, JWT encryption and verification, authentication. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.